For everyone else, we have linear kinematics. All right, so we had our equations associated in the x and y direction where you had s equals one half of your initial velocity plus your final velocity times time. Velocity equals initial velocity plus alpha times time, or a times time. So acceleration. Um, then we had s equals v naught times time uh, plus one half. Can you give us the initial a t squared. It was five meters per second. And v squared. They gave us the five meters v naught yeah. squared yeah. Gave us the high plus two a s. Okay. That's its velocity, <coughs> and height, stretch, and then. So with that, that we had basically s velocity acceleration in time. All right, if I zoom out a little bit, this was related to rotational kinematics. So I know we had this a little bit later on, but we still had kinematic equations there where we had angular displacement, which is theta equals one half omega naught plus omega times t omega equals omega naught plus alpha times time theta equals omega naught times time plus one half alpha times squared and omega squared equals omega naught squared plus two alpha s so these two are related in terms of the terminology everything's in basically radian form and radians per second. So omega, alpha, and time. Hey, hey sir, is, uh, yep. just just a quick recap here. Uh, is uh, omega always going to be in radians per second? Omega, yes. Right, typically with omega, Sorry. you're given RPMs, but you cannot use the equations with RPMs. So you need to go to radians per second. That is your very first hint off the bat. Like if you're given a velocity um, in miles per hour, typically that causes some problems later on in your equation. So it's always recommended to go to feet per second or standard units. Um, but here it is very important. You need to be in radians because revolution um, is a unit. Remember one revolution equals two pi radians. So convert that right off the bat. That will save you some points. Roger that. Hi, sir. Um, this is uh, Ronan. Um, this might sound like a weird question, but <clears throat> I'm always getting confused. Radians and rads are the same thing, correct? Yes. Yep. Well, so, yep, radians and rads. Rad oh, would be just rad, short for radians. Correct. No, he's, he's, All right, thank you. Yep, no, no he, problem. He said the wrong thing. He's so, yeah, I think it's a good exercise to look at in terms of our units. We have meters, meters per second, meters per second squared, and then obviously seconds. On this side, you will have radians radians per second radians per second squared and seconds <coughs> all right so that is going to be important because they might ask what is the tangential velocity or the um, centripetal acceleration. So if you're not given, or you're basically using the wrong units, you're going to get the, the problem wrong. So VT, we know that's going to be R times omega, right? Um, R is our radius, typically, when you think of a rotational standpoint. Right, you're gonna have a radius 
It's going to be moving with a speed and maybe an angular acceleration, depending. All right, so your tangential velocity, basically, what is, if this is a wheel, what is the velocity in our x direction? That's your velocity tangential. Right? Conversely, we also have centripetal acceleration, AC. Well, AC is our r omega squared, if I, if I recall correctly. All right? You have tangential acceleration as well, which is r times alpha. But <coughs> understanding some of these terms, because when you're dealing with rotational, we often, you know, like I, I think I went over the bike tire. When you have a speedometer on your bike tire, it's counting the number of revolutions you're doing um, with a sensor. And basically it translates that based off the radius uh, of your bike wheel to a velocity that gives you miles per hour when you're biking. Um, that's, that's how you get it. <coughs> so we'll see this with, you know, flywheels, I guess, generators, sure. um, you'll see rotational motion, grinding discs, we've had, um, bike wheels, all that type of stuff, just car wheels, etc. So make those connections there. And then obviously in linear kinematics, you have a ball moving at a velocity. Um, we care about the distance. So it's good to tie those two groups together. Hey, sir, uh, real quick, um, yep. in terms of uh, uh, centripetal acceleration, does that have the same relationship uh, with Newton's second law to force centripetal? Yes. Yep, and that's where, I, well, yes, that's where I, I'm getting here shortly. So okay, Roger. I'll, we'll cover that and then you pull it off. Um, but yeah, so when we moved from Newton's laws, let's go back to that. Let's focus on the linear side. So after kinematics, right, we had your, you know, ones to look at would be um, some sort of a path um, linear projectile motion, right? So don't forget when we have stuff like this, your main term. So at the max height, <coughs> we know that our velocity in the y direction is equal to zero. And we will always have acceleration in the y is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. All right, and we also know you can use symmetry. So we have a total distance x. This is gonna be x over two at that halfway point. And if we have a total difference time. Similarly, it's going to be time over two. So don't forget you have a velocity in the x direction and you have a velocity in the y direction, which gives you your net starting velocity. So you sum it up and you go through the problem in your x and y coordinates and think about the information you're given. Similarly would be a, you drop the ball off a cliff from rest, you could solve this kinematics, all right? We also learned later you can solve it also doing the conservation of energy. So um, don't forget that. All right, now jumping back over here out of kinematics, if we went to basically our forces, we learned that some of our forces equals mass times acceleration. All right, this is our this is our Newton's equivalent, Newton's laws. We have the x and y direction. And we know that if something's in equilibrium, the sum of the force is equal to zero. Okay. Now, <clears throat> when we went to uniform circular motion, so if I do uniform circular motion, I'll call it UCM, we had the old something spinning around a circle, 
or the hamster wheel stuff. We still had some of forces here, so this is not the sum of forces in the centripetal direction equals mass times acceleration centripetal, right? So this is not the rotational stuff that we saw with torques, the so rotational dynamics, which I'll get to a little bit. This is basically a kind of a subset introducing circular motion. So it's not directly relatable to the forces itself, <coughs> but it is important to note that when we sum centripetal direction, we're looking this way. So if we had a rope, a tension, or maybe we had force normal at that point, depending on our type of problem. That is your sum of your forces in the centripetal direction. Typically AC, we relate this to AC equals, what is it, V squared over R, if I remember right. I'm trying to look at my equation sheet. Yeah, V squared over R. So we typically we care about the velocity at that point. So it's the tangential velocity. And I think you have the car examples going around a curve, or you have the going up over the hill force normal type of stuff. All right, so that's, we learned about forces and then we used those forces in a circular direction, all right? It's not yet rotational dynamics, that's different because we had kinematics, and then we had our basically our dynamics, which are some of our forces. Um, when we get to rotational dynamics, that's a little bit different, and I'll basically introduce that a little bit. So when we got our uniform circular motion. It is summing the forces equals mass times centripetal acceleration. That equation and kind of how it applies to where you sum your forces is what I would take away from that lesson. All right. Now, with our forces in the x and y direction, our classic examples are you got a box along a surface, pulling force, the force of friction, force normal, we obviously have our weight. Um, then we had our typical, and I think you saw this on a couple of exams so far, tension problems. Right, you got your weight, Tension one, tension two, <clears throat> problems like that. Again, we've had it on pretty much every midterm. Well, obviously only one midterm and a couple of quizzes. So you're going to see it here. Um, things to take into note is do forces exist or not? Um, you had some where you had the airplane one, right? Sliding down the airplane ramp. Um, here it was just moving, so we had the force of friction, call it motion. There was no other pulling force, so our only other forces were Fn and weight. The big key, anytime there's an inclined plane, you rotate your axis in x and y direction, and then you need to sum your forces in the x, mass times acceleration in the x, sum in the y, mass times acceleration in the y. In this case, it's on a plane. We are not going to be moving up or off that surface. So typically acceleration that y direction is always zero. X direction depends on the type of question. I think your last exam, you had to take into account um, accelerating down and it all became then the relations to weight between mass and gravity. So working through those problems is, is important. Um, let's just remember when you sum things, force of friction equals mu times Fn, our Fn has to come from the sum of the forces in the y direction. Do not set it equal to mass times gravity. It needs to be some of the forces in that y direction. All right. And then, Question, yes, go ahead, Ronan. Um, <clears throat> just to make sure that I get this right, so um, in that picture on the left there, the weight is going to have the x and y direction as opposed to the uh, the pulling force that you had in the other one. So yep. basically the same thing, but you make the weight negative on x and y, correct? Correct. This has okay. a px, a py, 
So the weight, because of our y-axis, is going to come down. Our wx is going to be negative because it's going the opposite direction. Wy is also going to be negative. Correct. Okay. Thanks for the recap. Yep. <clears throat> Just like you'll see over here, um, 